Why did I even agree to this adventure? Now I'm going to ask each of you. If your intuition tells you not to do something, trust it. My name is Kirsten. I'm currently a successful lawyer at a fairly well-known private firm. My path has been a difficult one. And one day I became a participant in some wild events that will forever be remembered. I had just finished my courses, received my documents and certificate, and was actively looking for a job. I remember sitting on various websites and sending resumes, but as you know, people with experience are needed everywhere. One morning I received a long-awaited response. There was no limit to my happiness until I looked at the address. To get a job in the firm, I had to move to some godforsaken town, which I did not even immediately find on the map. The offer was very promising. I thought so. A stable salary, exceeding my expectations, a convenient schedule, and a corporate apartment. But for this, I had to give up everything. Friends, the usual life in a big metropolis, and a cozy place to live. It took me exactly 24 hours to give a positive answer. Something inside resisted and as if told me that I should not do it. But I considered the risk justified. I remember driving to the airport and wanting to stop the cab several times. The gray, uncomfortable town was greeted with pouring rain. I got to the desired address and saw a small, unremarkable building. There was no signage or identification on it. I walked down a narrow hallway and saw a door with a sign that read, Law Firm. Great. No name, no phone number, no official information. I thought as I entered the office. Well, the interview went quite well. The man who met me turned out to be the director. We discussed the details of the job and I received the keys to my new home. And this is where the weirdest part began. It was a two-story building made of old red brick. I walked up the creaky stairs, looked at the shabby walls, and felt wildly sad. I turned the key in the rusty lock and swung open the door, which felt like cardboard. It didn't smell safe. The smell of dampness immediately hit my nose. I opened the windows and looked around the small room. Well, with my first paycheck, I was going to renovate the place. In the meantime, I had to make do with what I had. A bed, a chair, a nightstand, a TV, and a small balcony. That's enough to start with. That same day I went to the local store, bought new bedding, groceries, and a bottle of wine. After all, a new life was beginning, and I had to celebrate it. It was late in the evening. I lay in bed with a glass of wine and watched some quiz show. The next day was the start of my internship. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. I looked at the clock and cautiously approached the peephole. On the doorstep stood a lovely elderly lady. In her hands was a tray with some kind of pastries. I opened the door, and she smiled and immediately walked into the apartment. Good evening. Glad to have new neighbors. I came to meet you. My name is Martha. I introduced myself and accepted a treat from Martha. Her pressure confused me, but I put this behavior down to her age. The woman talked and laughed a lot. She said that she had baked the cupcakes for a new guest in the house and that I should always ask her for help. I barely escorted the active lady home. I was sleepy and her laughter gave me a headache. In the morning, I poured coffee, pulled out the muffins and got ready for breakfast. Breaking off a piece of pastry, I tossed it aside with a wild scream. There was some kind of brown bug inside. Good start. I thought, and headed off to work. Mm. That same day I realized I wouldn't stay in that place for any money. I can't give you all the official details, but this place was dirty. No crime. But that's not why I studied for so many years to start my career this way. I cancelled the contract and made arrangements with my boss to move out of the apartment. In the morning, I was on my way to the airport. My mood was lousy. I walked up the stairs of the old house and berated myself for such a hasty decision. I had started my new life from the wrong place. There was something on the doorstep. It was wrapped in a dirty rag. I squeamishly lifted the shreds of cloth and recoiled. 
It was some kind of viscous, slimy substance. Kicking it with my foot, I walked into the apartment and shut the door tightly. I was sick of everything that was going on around me. I sat on my bed and cried, feeling like the most miserable person I'd ever met. I wanted to go home, to the big city, to my friends and family. This dream was very hard. I dreamed that I was staying in this town forever, and I couldn't get out. I was awakened by a strange sound. When I jumped out of bed, I realized it was coming from the window. I turned my head and froze with horror. Just outside the window on my balcony stood Martha. She was smiling and waving at me. And her smile, I won't find words to explain it. It seemed to me to be the true evil of the universe. Terrified, I ran out of the apartment and stopped abruptly at the entrance. It was only then that I realized I had nowhere to run. There was no phone. I didn't know anyone in this town, and it was late at night. I had to at least get my things. When I got back to the apartment, there was no one on the balcony, but I'm sure it wasn't a dream. In a hurry, I packed my things and threw my keys in the drawer. I spent the rest of the night at the airport. Thankfully, this wild story ended happily, and it was a good life lesson. Always check employers and don't trust dubious neighbors. My story is dedicated to all those who like to travel alone. Guys, quit it. There's too many crazy people around us. My name is Phil. I think I've traveled the globe. Most of the time, we'd have a group of friends over. But if plans didn't work out, I was ready to go alone. This time, I flew to a small settlement on the shore of the Indian Ocean. It was a real paradise. Wildlife, sunshine, and a real connection with the world around me. The time on the road flew by. Seeing the planet from a bird's eye view and feeling your power is the most blissful feeling. I checked into an old hostel. Well, I've always been prepared for any conditions. Believe me, a comfortable bed is not the most important thing when traveling. It was a narrow room for four. Luckily, no one was here but me. I threw off my backpack and went for a wander around the local streets. It was an amazing day. I took pictures of everything around me, went to a small market, bought exotic fruits, and relaxed on the ocean. When I got back to my room, I fell on my bed and promptly fell asleep. Have you heard the horror story? If you suddenly wake up in the middle of the night, it means someone was watching you. Only this time, it was a real nightmare. I jumped out of bed and felt someone standing next to me. Peering into the darkness, I saw a silhouette. At the speed of light, I was at the wall and turned on the light. Standing beside my bed was a guy. He was looking intently straight into my ease, as if he wasn't surprised at my reaction at all. Hi, I'm Liam, your roommate and I'll be sleeping here. I watched in silence as he slowly walked over to the bed across the hall, lay down without taking off his jacket, and turned his back to the wall. Five minutes later, there was a measured snore. I fell asleep only in the morning, and when I opened my eyes, the strange neighbor was gone. I had no time to distract myself with bad thoughts. This day, I planned to visit two excursions and learn a couple of legends. In a few days, I was to return home. My friends were already preparing for a group trip to the mountains, and I couldn't miss it. He was already in the room when I got back to the hostel. Liam was sitting on the floor in lotus position and mumbling something to himself. I carefully walked past him and climbed onto my bed. He didn't even seem to notice my presence. After a few minutes, he silently got up off the floor, looked at me, nodded, and left the room. Some kind of nasty feeling appeared inside me. I planned on evicting for the morning and moving to another part of town. All I needed to do was wait out another night. Okay, I'll just stay up until he comes back and sleeps, I thought, and after half an hour, I fell into a deep sleep. The bed shook and creaked. It sounded like someone was trying to throw me to the floor. I opened my eyes and saw Liam's face right in front of me. 
His eyes were insane. There's a demon inside you, he yelled and drew some signs in the air. You guys have no idea how fast I ran from this place. Grabbing my backpack, I flew out into the street, and in my wake, I heard some spells and wild screams. Fortunately, the man did not harm me. I continued traveling, but I didn't spare money for a decent hotel, and carefully checked the locks before going to bed. I returned home, alive and well, but I will never forget those wild eyes in the dark. Don't travel alone. Do you like stories in the horror genre? Subscribe to the channel and put a thumbs up. The wildest episodes are ahead.